Hello. Welcome to the very first video that I'm making that has to do with books to read if you want to learn about Greek and Roman mythology. Um, I, looked on, I looked on YouTube and I noticed that there are several videos that have to do with world mythology if you're interested. Um, so instead of doing another one of those, um, I thought maybe if you're interested in actually, actually learning what books to read uh, for yourself, uh, I figured let me present, uh, let me make a video that has to do with, with these books that I've read for many years. I started around 1986 and I've been reading them on and off ever since. Not only in Greek and Roman mythology, but world mythologies. So for this first video, I thought, let me start with Greek and Roman mythology, which is what most people are familiar with. So uh, basically, there's, uh, uh, to start off with, you probably would like to start off with a book that has to do with uh, a sort of bird's eye, gives you a little bit of all the myths and to kind of whet your appetite uh, to see if you're interested in the subject. And then after these book, after one of these books, then you may want to read an English translation of the ancient Greek original. So I have several books here that kind of give you a start. For example, my favorite is, you probably heard of this, it's Mythology by Edith Hamilton. Uh, this is a hardcover version, but there's, in any bookstore, there's a cheap paperback versions. Uh, this is a beautifully written book, very easy to read, and she goes through all the basic Greek and Roman myths, well, not all of them, but all the important ones, to kind of uh, whet your appetite to see if this is for you. Um, so um, it's simple, it's not very long, and, uh, and I highly recommend it. Um, of course, you've probably also heard of Thomas Bullfinch. Thomas Bullfinch was also a uh, uh, he wrote a very famous book simply called Mythology, but it's, it's, it actually has three books. The first is The Age of Fable, and that's the one that deals with Greek and Roman mythology. Um, I don't have a copy of The Age of Fable, but I do have a copy of this book, which is called The Golden, the Golden Age of Myth and Legend. And it is basically Thomas Bullfinch's Age of Fable. It's just kind of a souped-up, fancy version of it. It's very good. Uh, he, he very poetically and beautifully tries to give his uh, rendition of Greek and Roman mythology. At the very end, he also touches on other mythologies, but they're only okay. I mean, it's almost as if it's an afterthought, like, yeah, those stories are good too. I, I wouldn't really bother with when he goes into other areas like Norse or Egyptian. Uh, I would stick with the, that, that's for another video. I would stick for the Greek and Roman stuff he has in here. Another book that's kind of like the previous two is uh, this book, which a lot of a lot fewer people heard of, and it's simply called Myths and Legends of Greece and Rome. And it's by, here it is, it's by H.A. Gerber. And uh, G-U-E-R-B-E-R. -E -E and uh, and this, this is actually a, a very nice little book. It's kind of like Bullfinch and... Uh, and uh, Edith Hamilton's book, if you could find that one. And finally, I want to mention this book that everybody, a lot of people know about. It's Robert Graves' The Greek Myths. It's usually in two volumes. I happen to find one that's one volume. Uh, the problem with The Greek Myths is that, yeah, he's got a lot of facts and details, but it's kind of mind-boggling to read it. I mean, trying to read it, uh, he throws so many facts facts at you that instead of going through a story, he keeps interrupting the narrative by talking about, well, according to this source, it says this, and according to that source, uh, this happens. It gets really tiresome. But it's a good book to have as a, as a reference, you know, to look through any myths you like and you want a little more detail on it. Okay, so that's enough for the general books. So now you've read one of those, and whichever one you want, and now you want to go on to uh, the actual English translation of, of the ancient Greek and Latin text. So of course, the, I'm, try, I'm going to try and go in chronological order here in terms of the history of the writing. The, the oldest is, of course, Homer. Uh, Homer, of course, wrote the Iliad. And uh, this particular translation is very good. It's by Robert Fitzgerald. There's a lot of translations of Homer out there. Uh, everybody's got their favorite. Uh, this is the one I read, Robert Fitzgerald. He's very good. Uh, and of course, he wrote the Iliad, uh, Homer, and he wrote the Odyssey. So the Iliad is about the Trojan War, and the Odyssey is about Odysseus trying to get home. Uh, okay. Uh, now, next up, in terms of history, 
in terms of in terms of what's next what's what's next what's next would be Hesiod. Hesiod wrote two stories. He he wrote two poems. The first is called the Theogony, and the second is called Works and Days. Works and Days has a lot less mythology. Theogony is is the is the more important of the two in terms of mythology. He basically tells you he goes back to the beginning of time and how the universe was created and what gods and goddesses appeared first and all that cool stuff. So. So Hesiod is pretty important. Uh, next up would be another series of stories of the gods and goddesses uh, called the Homeric Hymns. Uh, this particular one is, is, by, is put out by Oxford World Classics and a translation is by Cruden, C-R-U-D-D-E-N. Uh, no, Homer didn't write them, but they're called the Homeric Hymns. Uh, series of stories, uh, a series of hymns to the gods, and it tells various stories about them. So it's also an important source of Greek mythology. Uh, now the next one are the what's called the tragedians. The tragedians are, are writers in ancient Greece who instead of writing poems or epics they wrote plays. Uh, there's three of them. There's Aeschylus, Sophocles, and Euripides. Now the oldest is Aeschylus here. Aeschylus wrote uh, we, we have seven plays. He probably wrote more, but we unfortunately only seven have survived. But out of the out of out of the seven, three of them are part of what's called the Orestian trilogy. Uh, uh, this uh, this one has all three. Uh, uh, you may want to find uh, another book that has all seven. Uh, I'm not going to go into what the other what the other four are. But the Orestian trilogy is really important. It consists of uh, Agamemnon, when he comes home victorious from the Trojan War, then 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 the libation bearers, and then finally the Eurymedes. Don't worry about those names yet. Just worry about getting the Orestian trilogy by Aeschylus. It's the most important three. Next up would be Sophocles. And you've probably heard of Sophocles because he wrote... We also have only seven stories that survived by him. But like Aeschylus... He, there's three stories that are really important from Sophocles, and that's called the Oedipus Cycle. Uh, it, it consists of Oedipus Rex, Oedipus at Colonus, and Antigone. And this particular book is really good, it, uh, this particular version of, uh, of Sophocles, because this cheap little paperback has actually all the plays in one little book. And it includes three plays that's part of the Oedipus trilogy, the Oedipus cycle. And of course, everybody knows this from psychology. This is a story of Oedipus when he finds that he slept with his mother and killed his father, he tears out his eyes. Well, that's this. Um, the, the third playwright, which is really important, is simply called Euripides. Uh, this particular book is really neat. Uh, it contains, now, luckily for uh, send for Euripides, we have a lot more than seven plays that have survived. There's like something like more than ten. Um, but this this nice little paperback has ten of his plays, some of some of his ten best. So you may want to pick up something by Euripides. I would recommend a collection of his, in collection in one little cheap volume of as many plays they could cram in here. Okay, now, okay, so the tragedians are over with. What's next? Okay, there's another epic that we have besides Homer, who wrote the Iliad and the Odyssey. Uh, we have actually another writer called Apollonius Rhodius, also known as Apollonius of Rhodes, and he wrote something called the Argonautica, also known as the Voyage of Argo. Now, this is better known as Jason and the Argonauts. That remember that great movie with the skeletons, that sword fight. Well, we have. Uh, we have this author to thank for it. Again, he's, uh, well, over here he's written as Apollonius Rhodius. He's also called Apollonius of Rhodes because he was from Rhodes. And, uh, and the Argonautica is also translated as the Voyage of Argo. Argo is the name of the ship. Uh, there's different English translations. I really like this one by Peter Green because it's actually in verse. The, the other translations out there, they're in prose. They're written, you know, they're not written in verse form, in poetry. But this book by Peter Green, it took me a while to find to track this one down it's not the most easy it's not the easiest one to find uh, uh, there's other ones that are easier to find that are in prose but I, I really like this one because he gives it to us in verse which you know uh, uh, Apollonius deserves so this is a great story this this, this is a must now everybody knows uh, uh, 
Apollonius of Rhodes' version of the Argonautica, but not too many people know that there's actually another version of the Voyage of Argo, which I didn't know until I discovered it by accident, by a writer, by a Roman writer by the name of Gaius Valerius Flaccus. And Gaius Valerius Flaccus actually gave us his version of the Voyager of Argo. And it's actually very good. Unfortunately, he never finished it. I forgot if he died or he got tired of it. I don't remember, but it's, it's unfinished. Uh, but it's still worth reading if you, want, uh, if you like the story so much and you want another version. Um, now, moving into out of Greek writing and into, well, besides this, this book. Uh, moving out of Greek and moving into Roman literature, we have, if you want to read, if you want to keep reading classical myths, you have to read Ovid's The Metamorphosis. Uh, now, Ovid was, unlike uh, unlike the previous books I've spoken of, it's not in, it wasn't written originally in ancient Greek, it was written in Latin. Uh, but it's, Ovid's The Metamorphosis is as, it's an amazing compendium of, uh, of the ancient Greek and Roman myths. Um, uh, he basically gives us his version of these ancient myths, but written much later during Roman times. And, uh, and this is a great, this is a must read. It's a great compendium and it contains so many wonderful stories and they all end in some sort of metamorphosis uh, where somebody is transformed into something else. Uh, and uh, so this is Ovid's Metamorphosis is absolutely essential. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna digress here, and I know I'm I'm talking about Latin literature now, but there's another ancient Greek book that people talk about that's also important when it comes to compendiums, and that's another lesser known book, and that's called the Library of Greek Mythology by Apollodorus. Now not to be confused with Apollonius of Rhodes, this is Apollodorus, and he wrote something called the Library of Greek Mythology. Now this is. This is written in ancient Greek. Uh, the reason why I'm, I'm going back to ancient Greek after I presented this Latin book is because they're both comparable in the sense that they're both compendiums of Greek mythology. They're both crammed with a lot of myths. Uh, uh, this one, Ovid's The Metamorphosis, is a lot more popular than Apollodorus. But if you're really hungry for all of these ancient sources and what they have to say about the myths, uh, I would recommend both of them. They're both really, really good. Now, moving further is another book that you must read, and that is The Aeneids by Virgil. Uh, this, again, like the previous, like Homer, this is also a wonderful translation by Robert Fitzgerald. And again, there's other translations out there, but uh, this one I really like. This is the one I read. And uh, 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 so Virgil, The Aeneids. And this is uh, a must read. This is like, this is sometimes considered the greatest Latin work Ever, or at least the greatest Latin poem ever written. And basically, just like the Odyssey, where it talks about Odysseus trying to get home after the war, this tells the story of the, of the losing side, the Trojans. What happened to them? What happened to their survivors? And it's the story of the hero Aeneas and how he takes his, his soldiers and his family out of Troy while it's burning to the ground and how he founds well, he doesn't really found Italy, but basically he travels to Italy and his descendants become the founders of Rome. So this is a, this is a must read book. Now, there's um, another book here that uh, doesn't get as much love. We, we heard of the Greek tragedians, uh, but there's another tragic writer that was Roman and he wrote tragedies too. And that was Seneca. Uh, Seneca, of course, he was actually a very wise Roman. He was the tutor to um, to Nero, uh, the notorious emperor, uh, and he was a great learned man. And he wrote he wrote tragedies too, based on the ancient Greek myths. And we have uh, six of them that survive, and they're all in one this particular one book published by Oxford World Classics. And I really like Seneca. He's a lot more gory than the Greek tragedians. You know those Romans, they, they like things more gory. Um, so he's, it's great stuff. Um, sometimes they say he left, uh, sometimes they, they say he left seven tragedies, but the seventh one is, people argue whether or not he really wrote it. So, but, but these are six. So if you really want to, you know, if you're really into plays and you read the, the you know, the Greek tragedies and you want to read more, Go to Seneca. Uh, 
Now, there's another book here that was also written in ancient Rome, and it's usually not talked about much when you talk about books on Greek and Roman mythology. Uh, and that's, uh, but I'm going to include it for one reason. Uh, I'll tell you in a second. It's called The Golden Ass by Opuleus. And uh, it's really an amazing story. Uh, it's basically a magical story about a guy who accidentally, by playing with magic potions by accident, gets turned into an ass. And, uh, and he has to suffer until he's released from the shape of an ass. Um, and, but what's really important about this book is that not only is it a great read, but it, it contains the story of uh, Eros and Psyche. Um, that's a very important story in Greek and in Greek mythology. And basically, if, if that story, if you really like that story and you want to read the actual source where it comes from and the longest version there is, it's in this book, uh, Opelius, the Golden Ass. And it's, it's, it's worth reading even whether or not you just want to hear about Psyche and Eros. Uh, now, moving on, now, okay, a lot of this stuff was mostly Greek mythology. I want to get into Roman mythology a little bit. There's this great book by Michael Grant, Michael Grant, and it's simply called Roman Myths. It's a, it's a pretty hefty book, and it's very detailed in terms of, you know, he, he goes through all the essential Roman myths and the history behind them, and it's, it's very scholarly, very important to read, uh, to read this book if you really want to know about Roman mythology. Um, and it's, it's just so well written and so scholarly, and I don't know too many other books that compare to this. So this is Michael Grant's Roman Myths. Now, there's another book on Roman myths, which is put down by the series called The Legendary Past, and it's also called Roman Myths, and this book is by Jane F. Gardner. And this is a great, great, great little book. It, it, it has, it, it's, it's got, it's crammed with so much, it's not very thick, but don't be fooled, it's crammed with so much information in here, and, it, and again, it goes through all the essential Roman myths that you don't hear about when you hear about Greek mythology. Uh, Roman myths usually have to do with foundation myths, great heroes, legendary heroes of the past when Rome was in its infancy, back in the days when it was uh, a kingship rather than an empire. Uh, and there's one more book I want to tell you. This is my last book, I promise. Uh, when it comes to Roman mythology, there was a civilization before Rome, and that was called the Etruscans. And a lot of people don't know much, or, much about that they had their myths too. So in the same series as Roman myths, there's another, as part of the legendary past, there's another book called Etruscan Myths. Now, this is usually not included part of Greek and Roman mythology, but it's, it's really, it's a great little book. It's by Bonfanti and Swaddling. Bonfanti and Swaddling. And I really, I really like this book. It really surprised me. Uh, sure, there's a lot of stories in here that kind of, of are kind of echo Greek and Roman mythology. Uh, that it, you know, but uh, 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 but the Etruscan, the Etruscans, the Etruscans actually are a little different. And uh, and this little book is really great to add to your collection if you really want to round out. Okay, you've you've read some Roman, you read Greek, and now you've read some Etruscan. Okay, now I know I've given you a lot of books to read, and you're probably wondering why did I, why am I watching this video now? I'm inundated with all these books I have to read. Well. I came up with something called a hatchet list or machete list. I'm going to cut the books down. I'm going to give you a list now of what I think are the absolute essential books that you must, 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 must read. Now, this, this list is rather personal. I'm sure there's some people watching out there that, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. That's not the list I would read. But this is just my suggestion. Um, so what I'm going to do is bear with me now because my books are a mess. This list is much shorter, and I wish I can't cut it down, but I'm going to, to encourage you to read. Book one, Edith Hamilton's Mythology. It's all you need. Book two, actually books two, Homer. I'm sorry, you got to read both of them. When it comes to Homer, can't skip around. You got to read the Iliad and the Odyssey. You must suffer. Next book. The Great Tragedians. I would say that you must read, let's see, sorry about that, you must read, and I know the tragedies, there's a lot of plays, but at the very least you got to read Aeschylus, you got to read his, uh, his Orestian trilogy, the three, the three stories. Uh, that's a must. 
The next thing you absolutely must read, you don't have to read any of the plays by him, but just those three, the Orestean Trilogy. And the next three plays is what I told you. Okay, now this book happens to have, oh, sorry, wrong book. I got you, uh, I need, I need the Sophocles book. Where did that go? Here we go. Sophocles. Okay, now this, this particular edition has, uh, has uh, the complete plays, but at the very least, you need to read the the Oedipus trilogy, those three, those three books about Oedipus, the king, okay, at the very least, those three books. So that's, that's six plays together. Not too much. Plays are pretty short. And finally, when it comes to the ancient plays, this book by Euripides, I think you should read at least a few plays by, by him, uh, at the very least. Uh, I would recommend, personally, I would recommend, at the very least, I think you should read the Bacchae, which is about Bacchus, the Bacchae, and Medea, uh, a, 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 which is the wife of uh, Jason and Jason of the Argonauts. At, at the very least, those two, because they're really great stories. But again, that's my own personal opinion. Okay, so when it comes to the, the tragedies, you have to at least read those. Uh, the next book that I think you really should read, and this is, again, I'm a little biased. It's a personal favorite. The Argonautica, The Voyage of Argo, because I just think it's such a great story. Um and by Apollonius of Rhodes. So you got to include this one, in my opinion. Uh, next up, I think you should read Ovid's Metamorphosis. Okay, like I said, this is a compendium of Greek and Roman myths. Even if you just don't want to read too many books, this book is very essential. Now, the nice thing about Ovid's Metamorphosis, I know it's a little thick, but uh, the, beauty, the beauty about this book is that it's... Uh, um, they're short stories, so it's not like you got to read cover to cover. You can you can um, flip through it, and let's say in Edith Hamilton's mythology, you uh, you like the story so much of uh, of Athena and Arachne when she turns her into a spider, and say, boy, I want to read more of that. Let's see what Ovid has to say about it. So you can flip you can flip to that story, and you could read you could read the full version in here. Uh, so that's the that's the nice thing about this book is that you could uh, you could flip around it and pick it up from time to time and read one of the stories of, of the metamorphosis and that'll you know and if if at the end of the day you read fifty percent of the book that's pretty good, okay. Now another book you absolutely absolutely must read. I won't let you go unless you read it, and that's my personal favorite, and that's the Aeneid by Virgil. Okay, so the Aeneid by Virgil is in the essential list. Uh, you have to read it. It's 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 such a riveting story. Uh, the Aeneid by Virgil. Uh, let's see. Am I missing anything? What what must you read last? Okay, one more book. Roman myths. Now I know the other book that I had before, the Michael Grant book, is much thicker, but. Uh, this is the hatchet list, and this book is much smaller. And don't be fooled by, like I said before, this book is 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 packed with 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 stories. It, it, it's very it's written in such a, a concise way that includes so much, and it's it's even it's even it's even illustrated. It, I, I can't recommend it enough. So basically, with this uh, with this little hatchet list, uh, you might be more encouraged to start reading the stories. So until next time, thank you so much for joining me.